Turn on. Recording is started. I'll keep an eye on the uh, on the uh, waiting room. Uh, so, good evening. My name is Rick Eisted. For those of you that uh, may or not may know me or not know me, I'm a member of the Rotary Club of Calgary Fish Creek. I am also sit on the District Learning and Development Committee, specifically responsible for these monthly club learning webinars that we've been. I think now is our third third year, so uh, it's been uh, it's been an exciting journey. I will be your home, uh, your Zoom host this evening. In the spirit of reconciliation, I personally would like to acknowledge that most of us on our call this evening live work and play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Saksika, the Kainai, and the Pakani, the Susitina, the Stony Nations, the Métis Nation Three, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. I'd like to welcome and thank everyone for attending tonight's session. Tonight, we will hear updates on our District 5360 Rotary Youth Programs. And we're very fortunate indeed to have the following presenters with us this evening to share their program updates. Brian Gentles from Calgary Heritage Park. He is the RAAC co-lead. Linda Morris from Calgary Fish Creek is our District Rotary Youth Exchange lead. Claire Martin and Brooklyn Wiggins uh, are members of the RILA team. I think one of them is a rotor actor and one is a former rotor actor, so we better do something to uh, get them back. Peter Imhoff, Lethbridge Mosaic, is our ripen lead. And John Crosser, Calgary Fish Creek, is, um, is um, piloting, launching a new camp called Adventures in Career and Financial Wellness. And you'll hear more about that at, uh, towards the end of the session. And we're also very fortunate to have the Youth Service Chair with us, Hiba Sayed. She's a University of Calgary Rotaract, and she's our Youth Service Committee lead, as I mentioned. Tonight's session is scheduled for one hour, possibly a little bit longer, and it is being recorded. Uh, live transcription has been activated, so if you want to activate it on your own device, look for the CC button at the bottom of your of your uh, device. Uh, I see most people have already done it, but please mute yourself in order to ma uh, minimize background noise distractions. And please use the chat button um, to communicate with each other and to ask questions. The plan is that after each presenter has delivered their message, we'll open it up for questions. You can either do it through the chat, which we'll try to monitor as we go, but we'll also allow you to unmute yourself and ask the questions directly if you should have some. So with that, I'd like to um, turn, it, turn it over to our presenters and introduce and ask Brian Gentles to please uh, share their message on REAC. Brian. Okay, just let me get, for some reason it closed out on me. Well, we tested, it ran, and now it ran away. There, can you see my slides now? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So again, thanks, Rick. Uh, Brian Gentles, Calgary Heritage Park Club, and I appreciate this opportunity to present REAC. Um, my slideshow is just gonna run, it'll go through two or three times while I, while I uh, chat here, I speak at about 100 kilometers an hour with gusts to 120. So um, so I've been, I've completed two camps. I drank the Kool-Aid. Plus, I was two years of planning during COVID. Needless to say, we had to cancel those camps. The first camp was in 1996, so 27 years. But this will be our 25th camp, our silver anniversary. Booked for August the 13th to the 19th, and our traffic lights are all green at this time and online applications are officially open. Entrepreneurship Camp was started by Community Futures. 
So they're a federal agency providing business advice, financing, and community support in rural Canada, akin to the Business Development Bank. CF operates across Alberta except for Calgary and Edmonton. Within their mandate for community economic development is youth entrepreneurship. Rotarians and individual clubs have been involved virtually since the beginning because, no surprise, a lot of community futures professionals are and were, were and are Rotarians in their respective areas. In 2018, a formal agreement joined District 5360 with Community Futures. There's now a steering committee with four Community Futures reps, four Rotarian reps, and I happen to be one of those. So it all takes place at Eagle's Nest Ranch, which is a wilderness conference center in Cypress Hills, south of Elkwater, Alberta about an hour southeast of Medicine Hat. Bunk houses for the campers and our youth leaders, dorms for our adult volunteers, an area where some choose to bring their RV units, full commercial kitchen, three squares a day, bedtime snacks, and a tuck shop is open at certain hours. We operate with one phone line and one internet connection. We limit Wi-Fi and have no cell service. It's very nice. No one's on their devices and our adult volunteers can get to cell services about five to eight minutes from the main site. Camp, as you can see in the slides, has two aspects, camp and business, work by balance. Campers are 13 to 15 years old. They come from across District 5360, which closely maps the Southern region of Community Futures. In 2022, we saw 58 campers in 10 teams. Play includes field games, archery, riflery, paintball, a ropes course, a climbing wall, skits, talent night, table games, and more. Particularly at the beginning of the week and during the business day, there's a number of team building exercises led by our youth leaders. We'll more about them later. So business is basically 8.30 to 4.30 in the course of a week in teams of usually six. The campers will learn about corporate structures, form a company, explore their vision and mission, brainstorm product or service ideas, targeting their, their audience, uh, on the final Saturday, which is their moms and dads and siblings and uncles and aunts and grandparents. Uh, they make decisions as a team. They research product costing. They discuss profit margins and profitability, build a business plan, which they then present to real bankers that come in from service credit union, and they negotiate their loans and their terms. They borrow real money. They shop at the garage sale, which is miscellaneous odds and ends left for, from the prior year, useful stuff. Then one camper from each company will go to Medicine Hat with some leaders, and they're the purchasing agent for the company. Some decisions must be made on the fly. Next follows production, along with discussions about marketing and advertising. The culmination of it all is market fair on Saturday. I see my slideshow stopped. I'm just gonna see if I can resume. There we go. Culmination is the market fair on the Saturday. So you're all invited, including for lunch. The parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, siblings, and friends come. They sell their wares. They're dealing with product management. They're dealing with incentives to get the last units out the door. They're dealing with cash management. And that's followed by tallying up all the sales, repayment of the loans, along with interest and fees, pay the garage sale bill, the successful teams, and they were all successful in both 2019 and 2022, then divvy up the profits between the team members, cash jingling in their jeans. So what was made and sold? Reclaimed wood transformed into inspirational signs, keyboard hooks, coat hooks, solar lights for gardens, birdhouses, plant pots with seed packs, bath and beauty products, spices and spice concoctions, jewelry, including made to order bracelets, gear for backyard games, dry ingredients for cookies and muffins, decorated blankets and bean packs that can be heated or cooled for pain relief, tie-dye shirts and, and uh, hoodies, hats, contests and game boards with prizes to play for a loony. So there was $6,000 of loan and float money was provided to the 10 teams. After paying it all back along with their tabs, campers went home with anywhere from $20 to $120 each. Some also made ch charitable donations, so Rotarians at heart. So 10 youth leaders, one per business team, have been prior campers, with the one exception in 2022, 
that Helen had done our online venture startup program in 2021. And then she proceeded to open and run her business following that. So she had good experience. Initially, the youth leaders spent two and a half days at Medicine Hat College in a leadership development exercise. They're assigned to each company and help the campers along. They help out on the recreational side and they lead the evening programs. Our adult volunteers come from Community Futures, Rotary and Friends of Rotary. One is assigned to each business team. Others organize and supervise the play times, basically overseeing the campers as the Eagle's Nest staff run all the technical aspects of the ropes course, um, the archery, the riflery, and, and et cetera. Um, then we have bunk masters. So Tony Walker, who wears both a, a CF and a rotary hat from Fort McLeod, he loves the role of bunk master. So he's in the bunkhouse with uh, half the boys for the night, does an evening wind down and a morning wind up uh, with that group. And then there's bunk masters in the others. And then there's some general support roles in the office, uh, leading the shopping excursion, et cetera. No cost for campers to attend. They're bused to camp from pickup points along a central route, and we expect them to be picked up by family. So camp leadership has been diligent in tracking in the lives and fortunes of past campers. 94% report significant and positive impact on their education and career. 75% have gone on to post-secondary education. 30% have a business or have been involved in a business startup. 68% of those in rural Alberta. 91% have taken on leadership roles. And very encouraging survey responses from the 2022 campers, youth leaders, and adults. These campers are our future, be it in our communities, in business, and in Rotary. So clubs, where do you come in? Please, sponsor campers. Um, there's an established process for applicants, but spread the word within your networks. Um, and with Rotarians, it's getting into the grandchildren these days for, for, for a lot of you, for a lot of me. Um, it's eligible for youth grants. So clubs with, with basic grant credentials, and I don't profess to be fully versed in this. If the club commits $1,000, they can receive 2000 in youth grants. And this is not competing with any other grant funds or applications. It is strictly for youth programs. RAIAC, Ripen, and RILA all qualify for sure. There's some rules about when grant money can be spent relative to when it's approved. And we're pretty sure we can work around that if, if necessary with the deferred payments. There's always volunteer turnover, so new adult volunteers are needed. There's great support at camp. The whole program is very well developed and fully documented. No specific experience is necessary. We all have a lot of transferable skills. A few new volunteers each year. In 2022, we had four new Rotary volunteers in, in uh, various roles, so Rick being one of them. And I don't see Anne or Dagmar or Don in the audience, but they were all new Rotary volunteers. Overall, we had nine first-year volunteers in, in total, and some had have uh, migrated from originally being campers. And there's some 15, 5, 10, 15, and even 23-year veterans um, that come. We have an opening for a camp coordinator. And that's a role that runs part-time uh, June to September and full-time for the camp week. And come on business day on the final Saturday. 2022, we had 16 clubs supporting us. The door is certainly open for more. Total budget of about $80,000. Community Futures, 33. Rotary, 27. Alberta Innovates, 15,000. And we're adding more tech to the curriculum to keep Alberta Innovates in our corner. And the balance from other sponsors, both in cash and in kind. We've also launched a GoFundMe RAAC Technology Fund a goal of 10,000 with 3,500 raised so far. And the plan is to ensure our computers for the business teams work well and support the teams. And we need to upgrade our camp walkie-talkie radios for emergency response from the bunkhouses, uh, particularly at night uh, when the medic is in the main building and there's a fair distance there. So please give it some consideration. And we're reaching out to Community Futures, we're reaching out to Rotary and to alumni. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. That was great. Um, we do have one question from Margie Bowen, Boyens from uh, the Medicine Hat Club. 
She was wondering how the campers' research needs are gaps in the market, to which they then respond with the development of a business plan. I'm sorry, can you repeat that, Rick? Uh, she was wondering how the campers research their needs or gaps in the market to help them, or how do they actually come up with, I guess, a business plan for their product? So basically, the group, and again, there's a youth leader that has some prior camp experience, just starts doing some brainstorming. We remind them that their audience is their parents and their grandparents and their siblings. Um, so that's the, the market that we're building for. Um, in terms of research, each team gets some a limited amount of time on the computer, on the internet, so they can do some price research with the the Home Depots, the the Walmarts, the um, can't think of the name of the fabric store, and the like. And that's that's on on Tuesday as they're building their business plan. Um, so we're not so much going out looking for you know a need in the marketplace per se, but targeting um, the audience that's going to come and be our shoppers on Saturday. Does that help? Thanks, Brian. Uh, that's great. I don't, yeah, it looks like you. Uh, when is the deadline for confirming sponsorship of a student or students by the Rotary Clubs? And that's from Milena Troncheva in Red Deer. Well, we would like to get it in in the February, March, April timeframe. Um, but fr quite frankly, we were still getting sponsorships in July last year, and that's not a problem. Okay, thank you. I don't see any other questions in the chat, so I think we'll move on and um, ask uh, Linda Morris if she could share her screen now, please. Let me get out of here. Thanks, Rick. I'm going to try and make this. There we go. All right, Rotary Youth Exchange. After three years, we are back and we're thrilled. So we're gonna talk about long-term first. Um, for those of you who may have forgotten what it's all about, it's in country from August to the following June or July. So it's a, a good 10 or 11 months. The kids go to school in a country and they're sponsored by a local club and um, hosted. The ages we're looking for this year, we're, we're a little more flexible. Um, we'll take some older kids because we didn't uh, send anyone out for the last three years. So we're looking usually around 15 and a half years old to about 18. They live with two to four host families while they're away. Ideally three is um, been, been said to be the ideal number of families and uh, we, as long as it's more than one. So we do uh, have the students attend pre-orientations and we train them and we give them language courses depending on where they're going. So the ideal candidate, um, generally the kids that are a little more uh, academic, have a higher academic standing and, um, and have worked hard at their schooling, are more adaptable and flexible when they go uh, into a foreign uh, situation. We do have to have uh, the student be either a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident, just to make sure we can get them back into the country once they're done. I've talked about the ages. And uh, they, these are some of the um, attributes we're looking for in the kids. We, we interview them, the clubs first interview them, and we've, instituted a new way of doing that for areas like Calgary and Lethbridge, where you have multiple clubs interviewing multiple students. We now bring all of the clubs together and they build a panel and interview the students together in that location. And then they rank them. And if we have 15 students in Calgary and only five clubs, then the top five kids get selected for those top five clubs. And it made it a little easier than one club interviewing six kids and one club interviewing one kid and one club not having any kids. And that poor club with the six kids, those other five kids got 
sent around to interview over and over and over again. So we find this panel is, is working really well. So what can the students expect? Same thing, they're gonna travel with their host family. They're gonna be immersed in this new culture. And we really, really emphasize in the, um, in the orientations that there will be homesickness, there will be boredom, there will be a culture shock. However, if they stick it out, by the time they're done, they will actually have been immersed enough that things in that culture will start to feel normal to them. So they come back with wide-eyed, open minds and are, are ready to take on the world. They're accepting, they understand the differences. Um, and where we really find we now have to help them reintegrate back into their normal life, it's reverse culture shock, which sometimes is harder to deal with than going in the first time, first place. We've done a lot of work over those three years when COVID hit to try and reduce some of the costs. We've uh, changed how we do orientations. We do some by Zoom. We do some by homework. And we, um, only, we don't do any overnight stays for the outbound. So that's allowed us to reduce the outbound fee from $6,000 to, uh, to 2,500 or 7,000 to 2,500. And, and that's uh, plus the thousand dollar performance bond. So we asked the kids to put up a performance bond of a thousand dollars. And the reason for that is that they have skin in the game. Every time they miss an orientation or a homework or a report, money gets taken off that performance bond. So they they learn that they have to be responsible and they have to be on time and they need to um, make sure they're, they're keeping up with their homework. So the 3,500 includes the $1,000 performance bond. We do training, as I said, we give them a blazer and crests and a pin, uh, language programs. When they return, they have a debrief and reverse culture training, which, as I said, is, is a tough one for them. The cost to the outbound families. Originally, when we had the flat fee, it included the airfare. We've taken that out now. Airfare is, is uh, one of those eligible fees under the grant program. So by pulling it out, it allows, one, the, the parents to find a cheaper flight or use their points. Or if a club wants to pay the airfare, it's very clean what that airfare costs and they can put it through their grant. You can see the other things here that the families need to pay for. And um, it adds up to maybe all in about ten dollars to $13,000 for that family to send their kid on exchange. We did some surveys, uh, we did some analysis and for you to have your student at home for a year is generally 15 to 18,000. So we think we're in the ballpark. This is the timeline for the outbound exchange. It is a three year, more or less three year program. Uh, the first year is finding the students, um, selecting the students and training the students. The second year is when they're actually out on exchange and the third year is when they re-enter. So what do we need from clubs? We need clubs to sponsor and host students. Within that club, we need these four roles to be identified and trained and engaged with the students. Uh, each each uh, student needs three to four host families. And the screening is a, is a big one for us. We've been three years without doing the program. So a lot of people are behind on their screening. So I know that uh, Rick and his program and Craig on our side is, is uh, calling and pushing people to get their, their screening done before the kids start to come in in August. Short-term program. This one is starting to take off for us. It's a family to family and it only goes over the summer. This one is where the club will still have to sponsor, but the student goes and stays with the family that they're matched with. And then the two of them come back and stay with the family here. So from a club perspective, there's no host family requirements. There's no school requirements. 
there's no um, reciprocal agreement or, or any of that sort of thing. There's no cost. The family is going to pay everything because they're paying for all of that stuff, the same as the long term, the airfare, the insurance, and um, what else? That's about it. The airfare and the insurance and their spending money. So it's a it's a really nice program for clubs who have never done exchange or are just trying to do something a little smaller to, to take part in. And again, same ideal candidates, they're adaptable, friendly, bright. The, the other change here is we'll take up to 19 year olds. It, it goes over the summer, so July and August, so three to four weeks here and three to four weeks there. Oh, pardon me, the students travel together again and they, they, they get to, pardon me, I got a frog in my throat. They get to um, see a little bit of a different culture and then they get to show off their culture when they bring the students home. They might pick up a little bit of the language um, but probably not as much as they would have in, in the long-term exchange. So the cost for the um, administration piece of it, us doing the orientation and that would be a $300 fee. And um, families again are, are responsible for the air travel, valid passports, insurance, um, and make sure that they all have, the kids all have the right vaccination, same as long-term. So in the short term, the club's involvement. So we need the club to sponsor the student. That means they're going to sign that guarantee saying, we are sponsoring the student. We'll expect them to interview the student. We'll expect them to make sure the student has a counselor. And it could be a combined counselor, inbound, outbound. You don't need two. Um, you might want to invite them to some meetings or take them on outings. Um, and again, make sure that whoever is dealing with the kids are volunteer screened. So we've got a number of uh, European countries right now looking to match with our kids. We have a few kids already fully submitted their applications and um, others who are in the works. The applications close in February for the short term, long term is closed. So this year is, as I said, the short term applications are closing the end of this month and then we'll open them again for next year. And the long term applications obviously are closed. We have nine students going out this year and nine inbounds coming in with 10 clubs. So one club is sharing. And uh, on the short term right now we have, I think there's four full applications in and another four in the works. And what's really nice about this, Brian, thank you very much. You must have mentioned some of the programs at your REAC last year, or maybe it was Ripen. I'm not sure which one, but we have one of those students has applied. And funny enough, they're from Fort McLeod who hasn't done short-term exchange for a while. So we're trying to convince them that this might be a nice program just to ease into it. So thanks very much for sharing other youth programs in your programs, wherever that came from. I, I'm sorry, I can't remember. And that is all I have. Thanks very much, Linda. Um, a comment and a question. So the comment, uh, Brian Gentles has said, uh, having been an outbound counselor twice, you must really loved it. And speaking with others, the exchange students grow four to five years in maturity over their exchange period. And I can also ditto that because it's incredible the impact it has in such a short period of time. They come back as world ambassadors, uh, a lot more independent than they were when they left, but uh, it, it's all been 99% positive. Question Absolutely. Comes, question comes from Denise and uh, she said, can you share some details of the ranking system used? And I'm assuming she's talking about the group interviews. Yes. Um, so Jaden, our outbound coordinator, has put together a set of questions that every all of the clubs will use. And as they go through various sections there, they put a, a score. So at the end of it, the highest score obviously will be the most positive interview and um, most relevant. So that's how they rank them. 
And then, of course, there's a second interview, which we just did last weekend by the district. So again, Jaden um, put a different set of questions there. And by then the club has already chosen them, but we're just double checking that the kids are going to be successful when they go out. So we dig deep on some of the homework we've asked them to do and put them in some awkward positions. So our orientation, Jaden started the orientation speaking in Portuguese and made it very clear. He was very frustrated that nobody understood a word he was saying when he was trying to teach them something. So it, we try and put them through those sorts of things. But the ranking is through the interviews. There's various scores for various um, sections of the interview. Thanks, Linda. And um, Margie has another. I've got time for one more question. Uh, with regard to the $300 admin fee for the short term exchange program, when is it paid and what all does it cover? Okay, so the $300 is um, we usually invoice it once the students have been interviewed and chosen. So that'll happen mid March. So we'll probably inter um, send out the invoices for them to pay that in April. So what it covers, Margie, is we have uh, an online system, yay. We have um, uh, various things that we have to pay regardless of whether we have students or not. And then we have orientations. And this year we were thinking of bringing the short term together on an orientation. So the 300 covers a bit of the admin and a bit of uh, bringing them together on the orientation. Great, thanks, Linda. Okay, I think we need to move on. So um, next is we'll hear from our Ryla team and that's Brooklyn and Claire, please. Oh, cool, I'll just share my screen real quick here. Okay, um, so I'm Claire, for those of you who don't know me, um, I am the incoming chair of Ryla and uh, my co-presenter is gonna be Brooklyn who is our registration chair. Um, she'll be taking over about halfway through here. Um, so yeah, for, for those who don't know, or maybe forgot it's been a few years, um, RILA stands for the Rotary Youth Leadership Awards. Uh, basically the conference is kind of meant to be an, an award for um, students who are already doing really good things leadership wise in their communities, whether it's their school, interact, um, club, sports, things like that. Um, and we bring all of these young aspiring leaders together um, for a weekend and we, it's an award <laughs> um, and we bring them all together and we kind of try to have them leave with something um, a little bit better than they came. So a good example of this is um, our, our, our main goal is to um, empower engaged youth leaders in a shared journey of leadership through personal development. So we do this um, a few ways. We start with um, personal development, um, a mix of personal development activities and leadership activities, um, team building activities, um, and, and just existing with a bunch of young leaders um, the same age as them from all over the province. Many of these students come from rural areas where they haven't actually met um, students from, from across the province before. So it can be a really cool new experience. Um, yeah, so a, pers a perfect delegate is in high school. We take um, anyone from grades nine to 12 um, and the age range is 15 to 17 years old. Um, they're already an established leader in their community or school uh, to, to some extent, and they're open-minded minded and willing to take on a challenge. Um, Here's just some following examples with some pictures we've compiled of just the ways that we kind of bring all these leaders together. And then what do we do once we get there? Um, we build better leaders. We do this through um, workshops. We bring in speakers um, and have them do different leadership activities, um, outdoor activities and games, um, introspection. So this is the personal development side of things that I was talking about earlier. Um, have them really dig deep and, and discover what they want. Um, how they can help others, um, and just really understanding themselves because we believe at Ryla that um, the first way to, to help others is to understand how to help yourself. Uh, puzzles and challenges, um, and of course, fellowship. And there is Rick there in our photo. Um, he attended Ryla, I think this was 2018. 
I can't remember. Um, 17. 2017. Yeah, there you go. Um, so this way, um, our main goal is that when our delegates go back to their communities, they're able to make those around them better um, and better help their communities uh, with the skills that we've given them. Um, yeah, so that's kind of just a rough overview of, of what the delegates that we're looking for um, and kind of just what RILA is all about and our main goal. Um, I'm going to pass it off to Brooklyn now, who's going to talk logistics with you guys about um, registration and how, how do you actually go about sending a delegate to RILA. Yeah, thank you, Claire. Uh, so one thing that we do want to point out is just delegate safety, as with as mentioned um, by other speakers, all of the programs through Rotary uh, delegate safety or just student safety in general is very important. So all of the counselors do go through the vulnerable population Calgary police checks every single uh, or it's not every single year, just whenever it uh, needs to be renewed. And they reapply every single year. So just because you were a counselor before doesn't mean necessarily you're going to be a counselor again. It's all about your uh, performance, for lack of a better word, as a counselor at RILA, but also just making sure that the team that we have every single year um, is a good group of people, people who have the delegates as their first priority. They're not just going to RILA to see their other co-counselor buddies. It's all about how can we make the best experience for the delegates. And we've all been to RILA. We all know what you're supposed to get out of it and walked away feeling you know just like as Claire's mentioned some you get something out of it that you haven't before you leave a better leader um so we know that experience and we really want to make sure our delegates get that just as we did and so you reapply every single year and our amazing chairs they choose the counselors who are going to come back and then there's training as well just to ensure safety um I, as mentioned, all delegates are safe and prioritized at RILA, and that is our number one goal. Claire, if you want to switch over the slide. Thank you. Uh, so RILA this year is May 11th to 14th, so that's a Thursday to a Sunday. Starts kind of midday Thursday and goes to about midday on the Sunday. This year it is at Camp Chestermere, which is where we had it in 2019. That's the year that I went as a delegate. Uh, it is an amazing uh, venue. Uh, there's um, the delegate sleeping cabins and there's um, just some awesome uh, facilities there and the staff are great. So we're very excited to have it at Camp Chestermere again. And it's local to, uh, pardon me, a lot of delegates. You know, there's lots of clubs in Calgary, of course. And uh, I came from Red Deer when I was a delegate. So it was even fairly local to Red Deer, which is nice, not too far of a drive. And registration is open now and it is going to be closed April 30th. So that includes the registration uh, deadline and the payment deadline. Claire, if you want to switch over. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so all the delegates are sponsored by Rotary Clubs. It is this year about 550 per delegate. You can email that uh, email right there to sponsor a delegate. It's good to just let us know before your delegates that you have chosen to apply, uh, before they do apply, just so that we know how many delegates are going to be sponsoring and to look out for those applications. So if you could shoot an email to, to that when you know of how many spots that you want to reserve for RILA, that'd be great. And that is the registration link. So um, mentioned before this started, someone asked about the uh, independent delegates. So that's something that I think that's our next slide, Claire, if you want to go. Yeah, so independent delegates. So uh, we have in the past had either rotary clubs who they want to sponsor you know say three delegates but they can only find one delegate or they can't find any students who are interested in attending rila but they have the sponsorship and they really want to be able to send a delegate to rila so uh, what we've introduced is individuals who whether you know of them and your club has already found that the delegates that you want to sponsor or individuals just in the community who are clear leaders, they can apply to uh, be a delegate at RILA still, even if they haven't already been paired with a Rotary Club, which is really awesome. So we're making sure that if there's a Rotary Club who is able to sponsor a delegate, then we're getting as many delegates as RILA, at RILA as possible. So it's one in the same registration form. So if you know of anyone who isn't paired yet, who wants to apply to be a delegate at RILA, they can still use that form. Um, yeah, so that's it on independent delegate. Uh, you can, yeah, thank you, Claire. Um, another important thing that we wanted to mention is that, as mentioned tonight, uh, Rotary Clubs can use grants to sponsor delegates. 
Uh, something last year was we had a lot of uh, different Rotary clubs using grants to sponsor delegates, which was really great because if that those grants are available, it's good to use them and RILE is a great opportunity to use them. So you can find out more information on the website. I'm not uh, very well versed in the grant process and that sort of stuff. So I'm sure people on the call know much more about that, but uh, I know there are some great resources on the website there. And then I will get to questions, but just on the last slide, we are having, you know, a little similar to this event tonight, our own information session, uh, just for anyone who wants to ask more questions that we might, may not have time for tonight, or individuals who couldn't come tonight, um, about RILA in general. So that is February 23rd at 7 p.m. Uh, you can send us an email if you want to attend. Uh, you don't have to. If you just uh, realize you're available and you want to show up, ask your questions, that'd be great. We're hoping to have a good turnout and get even more delegates at RILA this year. Um, you know, after COVID, our numbers are a little lower than they were, so we're hoping to get back up to uh, the delegates, the, the amount of delegates we had in 2019. Uh, yeah, I think that's wraps it up. Oh, another thing I want to mention is every Friday at 1 to 2 p.m., there is a Riley Inquiry Hour, which is basically just like the um, the meeting that I, I we just talked about. Uh, it's informal. It's on the same Zoom link. I send an email every Friday morning to remind everyone about it. You can hop on, ask your questions. Uh, very informal. Um, so if you want to come to that, that'd be great. I'll be there every Friday. But other than that, uh, does anyone have any questions? Uh, yes, Brooklyn. I don't know whether you or Claire want to handle this, but it seems like a rather timely uh, question. Olivia says, I'm a grade 12 student and I will be turning 18 in late April. Would I still be able to go to RILA this year? So we do look at things like this on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, our ideal group of delegates are between the ages of 15 to 17 when they're at RILA. Um, I'll maybe pass it to Claire if you have a better answer for this. Yeah, um, generally we do go for 15 to 17 year olds. Um, I think there have been exceptions made in the past um, specifically like when we've had clubs that just like, you know, it was a last minute thing. And like, that was kind of, uh, the club, like was, it was either that, or they just wouldn't be able to sponsor someone. Um, yeah. So, so we're aiming for 15 to 17. Um, if you really feel that you can't find a delegate who's under 18, send us an email and we can talk a little bit more about it. Um, but just like, um, we, we do try to keep it with people who are seven to 15 to 17, just because of, um, you know, as soon as you get like 18 year olds mixing with 15 year olds, you end up with a lot of other like training and liability things. Um, we're all trained to like be around vulnerable populations and we have the vulnerable sector check um, because the counselors are over 18. Um, when you have other delegates, it just gets um, a little bit complicated with that. So shoot us an email, I would say. Um, but generally, yeah, we try to stick with the 15 to 17 range. So just building on that question, Dave Leslie is asking, would you consider it appropriate for delegates considering applying to attend on the 23rd, the special session that you're having? Would you rec encourage it? Um, I think if the delegates have specific questions that their Rotary Clubs can answer about RILA, then I don't see the issue with it. We'd love to answer those questions. Um, if it's something that a Rotary Club representative could ask at the meeting, uh, the in, the session was kind of created with uh, it being Rotarians in mind, but we're not opposed to that. Um, so yeah, long, story, long answer short, I would say yes. Uh, yeah. You're open to that. I don't see any more questions in the chat at this time. So thank you both, uh, Claire and Brooklyn, for your presentation on Ryla. And we'll thank now you. move. We'll now move over to uh, Peter Imhoff and Ripen. Awesome. Good evening. Let me just bring up my presentation. Can you see the slideshow? Yes, I got some nods. Thank you so much. That's fantastic. Uh, thanks to Rick for organizing all of this. This is really a great opportunity, and I love that all the youth programs are presenting. Um, my name is Peter Imhoff. I'm with uh, Lesbridge Rotary Club Lesbridge Mosaic. And um, this is the third time that I help organizing the Ripen 
uh, program uh, now in 2023. Um, here is the generic link. Uh, if you ever want to go back to that, it's a tiny URL, Ripen2023. Uh, Ripen in a nutshell is a camp for youth who are emerging leaders. Um, it is a four day camp, 72 hours, but it's sort of from noon to noon over four days. Uh, we're looking at sort of 40 participants. Our age range starts a little younger, 13 to 17, but very similar to what um, uh, Ryla just described in terms of their um, uh, trying to keep that threshold of 18 and the complications with that, but also the flexibility. Um, the camp leaders uh, used to be participants um, as much as we can do that with uh, the pandemic interrupting things, we had to soften that a little bit. Um, but it is an indoor outdoor experience. Um, and it's a camp on the Little Bow Traverse Reservoir, which is in the middle of the prairie. Um, and now actually a lot of uh, solar panels around there, uh, but there's a lot of space. Um, it's an hour and a half uh, to drive from Calgary. Um, so east of Calgary and north of Lethbridge, you can imagine there isn't a whole lot out there. And um, Ripen is really an, what we see it as an opportunity to grow, grow personally and grow as a leader. And uh, the key for Ripen is that we're looking for experiential learning. So learning by doing things, you know, I show this, what is that uh, 20 footer of a swing? Um, if you swing down that thing, um, you feel it, right? Your heart beats um, and you're a little scared and you have to sort of pull the trigger and actually go. Um, and you can't really replace that with an academic study of, you know, leaning into your vulnerabilities. Uh, at some point, you have to do it. Um, but we're talking about confidence development, meeting people, that sort of social piece, communication is a big topic, uh, working together with others, um, also looking at self-awareness, understanding who we are, how we show up, how we um, impact the people around us, ethics, a lot of movement in this physical piece. Um, but it's not like a sports camp at all, right? So we, we're also looking at um, artistic expression for people who are, um, um, you know, not as comfortable with that with that physical side. Um, what's really amazing to see is just how a, a safe space is being created uh, for the participants, and how that sort of brings out um, things in them that are are quite remarkable. So here's one of those exercises again on how to collaborate and communicate to achieve certain goals. Um, the participants really love the camp. I think that is absolutely fair to say really good reviews every time we do an evaluation and we get really good reviews, but we also see it, right? The participants don't wanna leave. There's lots of tears at the end. Um, so there is definitely, it's a, it's a good time. Um, there is um, a lot of, Evaluation, as I said, that we, we do every year. Uh, we spend a lot, a lot of time on that, making sure that we are, are delivering and that we find opportunities to get better next time. And uh, we also need to make sure that we know who we want to call back uh, as a leader or leader in training next year. And the participants. So we're looking for 13 to 17 year olds. And um, we are looking not necessarily for the people who have already proven their leadership and are, you know, at the forefront of their community, but we are the people who probably have what it takes to do that, uh, but just haven't had an opportunity to uh, experience and recognize that in themselves. Um, so that is what we're looking for, giving, creating a space for people who need to have a chance to, to just feel that out and to experience that, to have that little nudge and feel at the end of it, yes, I think I can stand up and I can, I can be a leader myself. Um, one, one piece that I mentioned here is um, something that is, is really you know, resilience is something that really helps uh, with, with this experience. People who have overcome adversity, whatever that may mean, um, typically find a lot of value in, in this and um, can really sort of build on, on that resilience that they've already shown, already proven, and then develop that further. Um, again, um, was mentioned already in, by others, there are definitely opportunities for um, students to attend more than one Rotary Youth opportunity. 
um, and you know between the different camps. But I really also want to emphasize the interact clubs. So if you are at all engaged with an interact club, um, I would really encourage you to make sure that the interactors are aware of these youth programs. I think um, there um, there should be some there should be more opportunities to connect the interactors with these uh, youth programs. When are we running? Um, it is May 5th to 8th. It is the district conference weekend. Unfortunately, we were not able to move away from that. So that's a bit of a challenge for us. And we are making sure that this happen doesn't happen again next year. Um, but for this year, uh, we will be over the weekend of the district conference. So this is a big change for some of you who know Ripen as a fall camp. Uh, that normally happens in September. Uh, we are changing this and we're changing this permanently uh, because it just makes so many things easier. Um, we can uh, stay within the same school year uh, to recruit students and send students. Uh, we can stay within the same rotary year to uh, reach out to clubs and make the payments. And also the leaders uh, who are moving on to university, um, you know, don't have time in late September to come back um, to, to lead a camp, uh, but in May, um, there's not necessarily um, the same commitment to university. So I really want to emphasize just what, a, well, what an amazing leadership team uh, we're having, uh, lots of really fantastic professionals, um, people who are really um, well, uh, whose daily job is in social work or uh, in counseling or nursing uh, and who bring that professionalism and expertise and uh, impact uh, to the camp. So that is really has been a real pleasure and honor uh, to work in that kind of space. Um, for, for me, I'm, I'm not from one of those professions, uh, but it's been, been a real, real joy. Um, there are definitely opportunities um, in particular, my position, um, if you're looking in or if you know someone who is looking to take more leadership within Rotary around uh, youth development, uh, we would love to um, have additional help on our Ripen team. Um, for the Rotary Clubs, uh, what's, what's happening there is the sponsorship, of course, uh, so that's $600 per participant. It is identifying a student, uh, but you can also sponsor a seat and then similar as Ryla with that um, independent uh, delegate, uh, you know, will connect you with uh, participants from uh, other areas um, to make good use of, of that sponsorship. Um, you can sponsor one or more participants, we're, we're open to that. And we expect Rotary Clubs also to look after transportation. Uh, so either to bring the student to the camp um, or for Calgary, uh, we hope to have a shuttle bus and, and Dave Leslie was on the call uh, is helping us with that. So thanks to Les today for that. Um, but this is actually a, a rather nice opportunity to connect the participants a little better with Rotary. Uh, you know, it's a well-defined time period. You are in a car for an hour or two, and you can share and talk about Rotary and explain why you're a member um, and give uh, participants an idea why that may be uh, something to do in, in their future. And we are looking for a commitment before the end of March. Um, if things happen after that, then you know we'll certainly have some flexibility. Um, but just for helping us with planning, we're hoping uh, to get that all settled by the end of March. So uh, highlights, personal leadership development, experiential learning, May 5th to 8th, sponsored by the end of March, 600 clicks per participant, and the clubs provide transportation. Uh, there's a website on the Rotary District web uh, page and a contact email for any other questions. I'll drop that in the chat right away. And that is what I have got. Do we have questions? I don't see any, Peter, unless somebody wants to uh, unmute themselves and ask a question directly at this point. You obviously had a very clear presentation there like everybody. And um, um, I think you've answered all their questions. I did get a question though, asking about uh, 
if people could, the participants could get a copy of everybody's slides. And I've agreed to do that on your behalf. Um, I'll send a PDF out to everybody that was in tonight's meeting. Okay. So, thank that you, Peter. Great. That's I'll great. Make space and thanks for the opportunity. Thanks, Peter. And uh, now I move. I should unmute myself and then you can hear me. Uh, so John Crosser, please take it away. Hi everyone, you uh, thumbs up, you can all hear me? Good, 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 good. Well, thank you uh, for this opportunity, Rick. Thanks for all the work that you put together and all the other uh, youth programs that uh, that we're running here uh, at the end of the day, um, uh, being part of, uh, uh, you know, youth uh, programs and so forth is really um, probably the main reason why I joined Rotary, because I love, uh, uh, I love helping uh, youth um, reach their full potential. So at the end of the day, these are all amazing programs that uh, that will certainly uh, do all we can do to, to help sponsor those as well. So first off, the um, uh, uh, there's been a group of us that have been working on this for a while. But this is a pilot program that we're going to run. Uh, it's called the Adventures in Career and Financial Wellness Program or Wellness Camp. Uh, the uh, you know the with this particular component of the camp is really focused on um, uh, on the fine on the the career and financial wellness part. Not necessarily a knowledge, although there's tons of knowledge that um, that will give people. But at the end of the day, we know that there's a uh, there's been a huge problem here recently, and and this is kind of the reasons why a few of us got together. Uh, uh, to actually uh, uh, work on work on some of these uh, issues that we're facing right now, that we know that back in 2019 we just started dealing with um, with making career decisions. So we ran uh, we've ran a couple of seminars. We have we have another seminar that we're going to run uh, the end of April uh, that will just we'll just talk about career issues and career choices and so forth. And so we have a bunch of speakers that'll that'll be there providing that. Uh, providing information on careers, like how to go from point A to point B. But today I want to focus on the camp that we're running. The camp is uh, is running as a result of some of the financial strife that adults are, go are going through. And it's also a lack of, uh, of quality education in our school systems to provide to provide students with the right information to actually uh, make better decisions and so forth. And so we know that typically when there's problems with the adults making um financial decisions then uh it it, it trickles down to the uh, uh directly and indirectly affects the uh affects the teens so again there's a huge issue there and we believe that career and financial wellness will help us uh will help us uh fix that uh just a touch here we also know that according to the um to the oecd uh again the organization for uh, economic uh, cooperation and development that uh, uh they're really big obviously on on uh, working with teens and uh, they they think that we should be doing a lot better job in our uh, in our schools. You're talking to kids about career opportunities, and there's all kinds of reasons for that. And again, we that's part of our uh, part of our agenda is to bring in uh, keynote speakers to talk about uh, best practices, best personal, best uh, professional, and best uh, financial best practices as well. And then also, um, again, we're just addressing issues here, and we know that there's some. Um, uh, the UNICEF back in 2021, when they did, when they pulled the top 38 uh, wealthiest countries in the world, uh, in in terms of life satisfaction for for teenagers, and again that's 15 to 18, uh, Canada actually finished in 28th place, and overall wellness was in 30 30th place out of 38, and teen suicides was um, was actually pretty high, and it's just. Uh, yeah, it's it should never be that high, especially in a in a country like Canada. But they're thirty fifth, so there's we have a lot of work to do and a lot of uh, uh, amazing things that uh, that we're trying to accomplish with the uh, with our with our teens and so forth. So again, focusing really on the um, on the uh, what what really makes us different with this uh, with this particular camp is that um, you know we we play a big part in the whole idea of uh, financial wellness as opposed to just financial literacy. There's uh, there's there's not a lot of uh, data that supports that just because, you know, you're going to turn around and start doing. So, again, trying to trying to instill confidence and um, 
and uh, in, improve uh, confidence is uh, is really is really important as well as behaviors and so forth. So again, we're we're attacking this from uh, from a couple of different uh, um, uh, modalities. Um, you know, again, there, there's lots of literacy pieces that we need to uh, that we need to incorporate. We've decided to scale this back to a three day camp as opposed to a five, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but some of the formal education that we provide, again, it, it has to do with a variety of those things, probably not all this year, but they, the, the students will have access to all this information, but we'll focus on just uh, three days, and, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so again, unbiased, uh, independent uh, information to help people make better decisions. Our, our, you know, our, certainly our vision is to help people make uh, better career and financial uh decisions and we believe we can do that uh, by providing some mentoring and some handholding and and the right information to help build their confidence and and help them make uh, better decisions uh there's lots of links and so forth that we have that will provide them for uh for I'll call it easy reading um but there's lots of motivational stuff that uh, that will come along with that as well uh, uh you know this workshop and we we do run uh, run a webinar that provides uh, uh, career choices and we focus again on on career stuff and interesting uh, times that we live in especially with uh with the launch of uh of uh um of that new ai uh chat uh, gpt uh in november it uh you know it's causing a big stir and so forth so again uh, we'll address those, some of those issues as well but again, uh, we'll provide them with a, actually it's a, you know, if, if we had more time, we'd actually provide them with their own personalized financial wellness plan, uh, which, uh, which is pretty, uh, which is pretty cool. But uh, at the end of the day, we'll, we're starting off small to make things, make sure we get everything in place to make this a, uh, an amazing program. So um, the camp, the camp again uh, is three days. Uh, it's going to start, uh, uh, I'll get in the dates in just a second, but uh, the first day we're going to talk about uh, investing in your career. Uh, we have uh, a couple of really important keynote speakers, one talking about in particular uh, career development, and we also have um, um, potentially a banker coming in to talk about uh, how to get student loans and stuff like that. And uh, and then also that same person will, will also be uh, talking about you know the whole university process as well. Um, day two is uh, funding your financial future. Again, stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Uh, there's going to be lots of uh, uh, there's be lots of interactive stuff, engaging materials. We'll be out and about with. Uh, uh, we'll head down to the um, uh, the Calgary uh, Stock Exchange. Uh, we'll bring in investment advisors to talk about uh, some cool stuff about uh, you know what you should be doing and that type of thing. We provide all the background in education and information. And then so the keynote speaker can talk about uh, from medium to higher levels of, of knowledge and so forth, which we think is uh, is important to hear from, um, you know, the people that are in the trenches day to day. And then also day three is driving towards your success. Uh, you know, one of the one of the things that uh, most teenagers want to do is they want to start buying a car, but they have no idea what the car costs. They don't know how to do the process, the insurance that goes along with it. So we're going to a car dealership and we have a, you know, um, a car insurance person that's going to be uh, talking with us as well to talk about uh, you know the true cost of of buying your of buying your car and so forth. So uh, you know I, I know as uh, having uh, two daughters that um, that were uh, relatively coachable, uh, we still made lots of uh, uh, they still made lots of dis uh, bad decisions about this. So again, I'm passionate to make sure that people are fully fully aware of all of what they're really getting into. So again, the uh, again we're talking about knowledge and developing skills and uh, increasing confidence, and also uh, uh, equating that to behaviors, which we really call about uh, competencies. So it, it, developing your competencies and your financial sweet spot is really what this camp's all about. So the uh, the fine uh, the fine uh, details of of the camp it's going to go from uh, June 29th. So the uh, the, Cal the CBE, uh, they actually uh, get out on the 29th. That's their last day of schools. Um, and then I know that the Catholic system is out on the 28th. I know that the Lethbridge schools are out on the 28th as well, I believe. And so there's not a lot of overlap of, of uh, students having to miss uh, school for that. But anyway, the camp is just a three-day camp. It'll go from 9 a.m. to... Uh, uh, I'll say 5 p.m., but it's probably going to be closer to 8 p.m. We have lots of information uh, 
lots of games, lots of activities, you know, uh, downhill karting, um, you know, going to the, you know, batting cage and driving range. The place that this is, uh, that we're hosting this is actually, uh, it's called uh, Victory Village. And I, I had no idea where this place was until I was out investigating places to, to uh, you know, to host our, uh, our camp. And it was actually, it's a, uh, it's out by the the um, the wind uh, recreation facility, and again, it's a hotel. It's got can house up to seventy people and so forth. So um, it's got a great facility, kitchen, the whole nine yards, stage and entertainment areas, and so forth. Conference center. Uh, the age group that we're looking at is from fourteen to seventeen. Uh, we want to uh, really focus on interactors and friends. At the end of the day, uh, our job is to uh, promote uh, and build our rotary. Uh, um, youth programs. So again, we're going to be marketing all the rotary programs that we offer to get kids involved as well. Uh, we're starting off with a minimum of, uh, we're hoping 10 students. Um, we, we can, max is 30 the first year. Uh, we'll see how things go the first year. Again, we don't want to bite off more than we can chew. Um, and so we're going to make sure we get it right the first time and then slowly build on, on good, positive and quality things. My background, uh, um, before I went into the career I'm in now, I was a teacher, so I'm, um, you know, I'm used to organizing and and making sure that uh, people are on task and engaged and and getting a, an amazing experience. Um, so the cost is 450 uh, students or 450 dollars uh, per student. Uh, again, three day thing. We have three speakers. We have three chaperones. I forgot to include myself there, and uh, and then away we go. We all have, um, you know, the uh, um, credentials for, um, you know, for safe and, and uh, making sure that our, um, you know, we have the background and all the safety, all the safety stuff put in place as well. So again, we have uh, lots of information. This is our first year. I wish we had lots of photos to show engaging students and candy bars and people drinking coffee and all kinds of stuff. We don't have that yet. Uh, next year, though, we will. And um, we know that again, uh, we're looking forward just like everybody else is to making Rotary uh, 5360, uh, our community stronger and better. And uh, we, you know, we're just trying to be one of the other youth programs that are trying to make a difference in our youth. So that is all I have, but I'm sure there's tons of questions there. I don't see any in the chat, uh, John, but maybe I would, um make a uh, comment regarding the title of the camp is Adventures in Career and Financial Wellness and the Adventures in Programs, uh, I believe are um, Canada only, Canada Canadian districts. So for example, the Ottawa Club has an Adventures in Citizenship and I know the Downtown Club is has routinely sent candidates to that. We sent, uh, our club sent a student to the Adventures in Human Rights in Winnipeg last uh, August. And there are several, um, some of them have kind of lost some momentum because of COVID, like a lot of, lot of things, but um, it's, um, the Adventures in is just to try to make this another rotary program. And if we could have one in our district, then I think uh, that, that would I think it would be a positive thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any doubt that there's a need. We will evaluate it. It is a pilot that we hope to run this uh, this year, and uh, hopefully we get some support from from the uh, the Rotary clubs here, especially those that are currently sponsoring Interact clubs, because we think that's uh, a, t a target audience that we should aim at for all of our youth programs, because mm -hmm. You know, maybe someday an interactor becomes a rotaractor, becomes a Rotarian. So if we can uh, get them into the system early and yep. support them and help them grow and help them develop, that's what it's all about. I see Joanne Van Donzel from High River has her hand up. So Joanne, go ahead and unmute yeah. yourself. Yes, uh, this uh, issue or this program has been my life work in a way. I wrote my master's on transition from school to work because our students do not have any real work experience in their lives. There, is, there are courses offered at the school that are job shadowing and work experience, but very few students take that. 
And that would be a great opportunity if every student would take those two programs, because then they're going out into the world and see and smell and hear what's going on in certain job areas. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, if we don't take more advantage of those two programs in school, that's really a loss of opportunities there. And uh, so they don't think they need that until they get out of high school, but right. this is really necessary at this age group that you're targeting. Then uh, some of the high schools offer career pathways and uh, there is an ob obstacle from the parent's side because every parent wants their kid to go to university and making a choice into a, a career path it doesn't seem right. to be part of their choices. Then the other thing that I found is most important is for the kids to build a network. Because if people know this particular student and they know what they're like, that they're honest, that they're hardworking, and they have certain skills, those folks that are in that network will call on them when they see an opportunity for them to, to either work or volunteer. Mm -hmm. And I found that is the most important part in anybody's life is to have a network that uh, you could call on for help or that will contact you. Then the next thing is the volunteering in the high schools. Uh, kids here in High River have to uh, complete uh, three years of volunteering for which they get credits. And uh, through that volunteering program, they can build up a network locally of people that they meet and that they can ask about what their life was like and what the experiences were for them. So if you could incorporate that in your plan in the future, that would help them greatly. Uh, they, through the, uh, there's a skills program at the high school and nobody takes that serious, but there are a lot of very important topics that are taught there. And, uh, but nobody really wants to take that because it's not part of their desired portfolio. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if we as Rotarians could do something about that, that would be great. Mm -hmm. So that's all I have to contribute. Well, it sounds like we have another uh, another committee uh, member. That's that's, that's <laughs> thank you. No, not I, really. <laughs> I, I, I totally agree. Uh, you know, th those are all huge issues. Uh, we do address uh, uh, many of those issues. Um, uh, you know, during our career choices, uh, we do have an electrician that came in and, and talked about, uh, you know, being a, um, you know, what it took to have her start a uh, start a career at being an electrician. She was a fellow Rotarian as well. So again, mm -hmm. we're always looking for speakers and people that uh, that have insight and so forth into uh, how to get the best out of out of students. And I know that uh, Joan or Jean uh, said, "Is it um, are we only focused on university stuff?" Uh, the way we address that is uh, at, at the end of the day, everybody should be upgrading their skill sets. Now, does that mean you have to go get a four year university and plus your you know, master's degree and then a doctorate after that? Not, no, not necessarily at all. Um, we just know that, uh, you know, if you want to be, uh, you know, if you want to work in the health industry, you know, it typically requires a couple of years. If you want to, if you want to be in the, going to the trades it, and, and be uh, registered, it takes typically a couple of years to do that. So again, yeah, we're all about upgrading your skill set. And One more thing I would like to mention sure. too is rather than having speakers, have volunteers who take the student to their place of work and have them stay with them for a week or two weeks to see what goes on in their environment. Uh, the kids have, have been talked to a lot and they think, oh, there's another one. So uh, they really need to be in the place and, and then see and hear what's going on. And I found that's most valuable. If we as, as Rotarians can do that for our students, that would be fantastic. Yeah, typically, that's what we're doing with mentoring. We want to make sure that people get those one-on-one uh, -on -one opportunities and, and so forth. So thank you for sharing. That's great stuff. Another mm -hmm. question that was asked, uh, can we repeat the location at Victory Village? Yeah, I I've been in a couple of times to talk with a guy, Pastor Brad. It used to be a, a, a church, but uh, the guy loves, uh, you know, financial education and so forth. So he's really excited about having us there. Uh, yes, he he said we could we could uh, repeat, um, but who knows? We they may sell the facility too. I don't know. It's right on that area, so who knows? We're all in. 
Okay, thanks, John. Thanks uh, for uh, the comments, Joanne. That's great. I think we need to move on. And our last uh, speaker of the evening is our Youth Service Committee Chair, Iba Syed. Sorry. And uh, so please take it away, Iba. Hello, everyone. I hope you are all doing well. Um, I just want to do a disclaimer. My presentation isn't an in-depth review of youth programs. I just wanted to highlight some of the programs that weren't presenting today. Um, so yeah, it's very brief and I just wanted to wrap up these wonderful conversations that we're having. Um, I, I, I'm really inspired by, by all of those programs, so I hope you were inspired as well. So I'm going to start off with Interact, which is a program that's very special to me because this is how my Rotary journey started. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit about my story. So I was when I joined Interact, I was a timid 15 year old. I was always hesitant to take on leadership opportunities. And I feel like through this program, my confidence grew immensely. I went from being a shy individual, unable to voice my opinions to becoming the president of my club in my graduating year um, and organizing all sorts of cool initiatives with my peers. And to be honest, I didn't really know what Rotary was when I joined. I just really liked the table on Clubs Day, and it seemed like it would be cool. Um, and it, I, I just really loved volunteering, so I joined. And it gave me so much more than that. It gave me not only the opportunity to take part in service projects, but also connect with people that are like my family today. Um, so yeah, I just feel that everyone in Rotary has a spark, and when we come to Together, it becomes like a big fire and we get to do all sorts of cool things to change the world. So yeah, so getting more into Interact. So how do you get involved? So Interact is like the high school chapter of Rotary and you can join by getting in contact with the clubs directly or getting in touch with Rotary sponsored clubs to see if there is one in your area. Um, and if you would like to get start your own club, you can also get in touch with our district and we can facilitate that. Um, participants can be anywhere from 12 to 18 years old. And throughout the year, you'll take part in organizing service projects, fundraising projects, um, networking opportunities. The possibilities are endless, to be honest. Like you can just bring up any project you're passionate about and you'll find a way to do it with Interact. Um, there's over 14,000 Interact clubs worldwide, so you're joining a global community when you join Interact, um, and yeah, it's it's amazing what it, it has in store for you. Um, everyone's experience is a little bit different, so it's always cool to hear everyone's Rotary stories, not just Interact. I, I love hearing everyone's Rotary stories, so I thought I would share a little bit of mine. Um, and if you really like Interact, the journey doesn't stop there. You can also join Rotaract. I'm not going to go too much into detail about Rotaract because it's kind of in this air, like this zone where it's not really a youth program, but it is because it's elevated to a club status now. Uh, but just to highlight a little bit about Rotaract, um, it helped me build the skills that I gained from Interact. And it's, it's so much fun. You get to kind of continue that same thing. But um, I'm in Rotaract right now and I feel like I love seeing myself grow and I feel like I do that. Uh, I see that personal growth and that professional growth, um, collaborating with peers, again, to do amazing projects, connect with Rotarians and people in your community. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about Interact and Rotaract. And if you want to join U Calgary Rotaract, at least let me know. <laughs> It, I will I will give you a spiel and just a little plug we're having an event tomorrow night so if you guys want to join it's <laughs> it's a fundraising uh trivia night we're fundraising for the Calgary Food Bank it's online it's a minimum of two dollars of donation to join I'll send in the details in the chat later but it would be nice to have some Rotarians interactors whoever wants to join is welcome um, and with that, I'm just going to head into New Generation Service Exchange. Um, I'm not going to uh, go too much into detail about this because they are having their own webinar on the 21st of March. And I feel like you guys should go to that. So I'm not going to give all the spoilers here. <laughs> 
So uh, NGSE is a short-term customizable program for university students and professionals up to the age of 30. Uh, with your host district, you plan activities that include networking, relationship building, humanitarian service, professional development, and leadership training. Um, the exchanges can last from a few weeks to six months and be arranged for individuals or groups. It's a really cool program because it's tailored made to your interests and it contributes to your personal and professional growth. Um, it's a nice way to learn about different cultures and even learn a new language. Um, and you can figure out all the financial stuff um, in the webinar um, on the 21st, um, but there's a bunch of options that can be made um, for you. You can also stay with um, a Rotary family there um, for your accommodation. And there's a bunch of options available. Again, it's tailor-made to you. So if you have any concerns, you can bring it up with your district and we could sort that out. Um, so yeah, again, there's going to be a webinar about it on the 21st of March, and I believe Margie is here. So if you guys have any um, quick details, information on that, um, you can, or any quick questions, you can ask Margie, she's here, I believe so. Um, and with that, I see a question from Martin in the chat to talk about Early Act. So Early Act is um, a program similar to Interact in Broderact, but it happens um, at in the elementary school. So this is a newer program. And it again, it's a very good way to get involved at a young age. And I just feel like these programs are really important. Um, all the youth programs are very important because I feel like they're like a bridge into the Rotary world and developing our future Rotary leaders. So it's very important. Um, but yeah, Early Act it operates at the school level. Um, Interact operates at the high school level generally, and um, Rotary Act op operates at the university level and a little bit beyond. There are some Rotary Act programs that operate online just after you graduate as well, um, before you segue into a Rotary club. So I think Rotary has like this nice little roadmap created for us. Um, and then you can also take part in these exchanges. So I just think it's such a wonderful organization to be a part of. And I'm so grateful that I got to be a part of it as well. Um, with that, I just want to wrap up here. I just want to thank everyone for coming out tonight and sharing about your wonderful programs and to Rick for putting everything together. Um, it's really important to celebrate our youth AKA the star players, in my opinion, in Rotary. <laughs> um, and just one last thing, I feel like if you had any takeaways from today, just know that whether you're just a youth trying to get involved, a Rotarian listening in, you have the ability to bring change from wherever you're standing. So just get involved, implement those service projects that you've always wanted to do. Um, and yeah, I hope you're inspired and I encourage you to learn more about these programs and spread the word about them. So yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Hippa. I uh, also want to thank our presenters for sharing their program updates and for everybody that's uh, been on the call tonight. Uh, I think at one point we had 38 people on and um, for close to an hour and a half. So we really appreciate that. Uh, for everybody that's remaining here, I look for a PDF of all of these PowerPoint slides from me probably tomorrow or the next day. Uh, this uh, webinar has been recorded, and so you'll also receive a link probably on Friday uh, to the video recording that's on our district um, YouTube channel. Um, lastly, but not leastly, our next webinar, in fact, we're having two this month. The next one is uh, next week, next Wednesday, and this is where our district Rotary Foundation Committee will provide us with a grants refresher. And as uh, Hibba has said, next March 21st, our new generation service exchange will be hosting a, uh, a webinar on, uh, on that exchange program. So we look forward to that. So uh, registration for these others, uh, the grants one is already out and about. Um, next week, the, the new generation service exchange um, 
uh, email invite will go out to all of our district Rotarians. So with that, I want to thank everybody for your time this evening. I hope you can say that when you left here tonight, you learned something, you realized just how powerful this avenue of service we have in Rotary, the youth service, we've got a great program. I may be biased, but I think it's it's some fantastic programs that we can help our youth um, grow, develop, become stronger leaders. So we just need uh, our Rotary clubs to support you. So thanks again, everybody, and have a great evening. Good night, everyone.